So today we have Reverend Malcolm Heading with us, and we're going to be asking a few questions of Reverend Malcolm, particularly to Jesus, the Jewishness of Jesus, the Jewish community, a whole myriad of topics. But one question that comes frequently, especially with Yom HaShoah being uh, last week, is Hitler. Was Hitler truly a Christian, like some of the Jewish community would say? Well, Adam, first of all, it's wonderful to be with you today. Thank you for your greeting. Uh, the truth about it is Hitler was definitely not a Christian by any means. He, in fact, despised Christians. Mm. It can be said that Hitler hated Christianity, but he leveraged it in terms of its history, unfortunately, and that is speaking directly to anti-Semitism that took place in Germany, sadly because some of the writings of Martin Luther, uh, the great Reformation preacher, right. we don't dishonor him, but we do understand, regrettably, that uh, his last book he wrote, for instance, was against Jews and their lies. Mm. And he said the most terrible things about the Jewish community and the Jewish people and their religion. And uh, there's no doubt that the uh, Third Reich, uh, mainly under people like Himmler, Hitler, and Goebbels, uh, leveraged the things that Luther said in order to convince the community, to convince the nation that their program against the Jewish people was legitimate. But Hitler himself was definitely not Christian, neither were the Nazis. To be honest with you, the Nazis believed in Norse religion. They mm. were fascinated with what they called the great Norsemen of history. Mm. And they believed this was some type of superhuman species, that because of racial pollution, intermingling, uh, decided to become uh, subterranean. I mean, this is wild stuff, but it's absolutely documented. And the Nazis, the Third Reich, believed that they were, through occult rituals, in touch with the subterranean hmm. species. And that this subterranean species would emerge again on the face of the earth if they could find a racial group that would purify and bring them back, hence the Aryan conspiracy. Wow. And in search of this uh, ancient subterranean group, the Nazis even went to Tibet, because there is a Tibetan legend about Shangri-La, this underground mm. city that's hidden somewhere. And they investigated uh, this possibility in Tibet, it's well documented, and uh, in order to make contact with the subterranean species and find out more about them. Now, in a castle in Germany, the SS under Himmler uh, built a type of SS shrine, cultic shrine. Hmm. And it was in this cultic shrine that SS officers were inducted and swore allegiance to Adolf Hitler, the Third Reich, and everything that went on there. But the interesting thing is that they believed that this underground world of the subterranean species, this master race of people, uh, was situated in a place called Valhalla. Right. And yeah, uh, the, the, Nord the Nordic yeah, heavenlies. Yeah, sort. and uh, Valhalla was, amongst other things, uh, a place where the great warrior dead were also uh, mm. uh, sent and they were alive and after their death in this great warrior temple of Valhalla and this temple was protected by strange demonic angels called Valkyrie right. hence the film about the attempted assassination of wow. Hitler that was called what? Valkyrie. Valkyrie. So the Nazi doctrine of uh, a pure race had nothing to do with Christianity. It had nothing to do with the Christian faith. They despised the Christian faith. Right. They hated the Christian faith because Hitler thought it was weak and, uh, and, and uh, uh, not worthy of a mm. strong, determined, pure people. And uh, that is a fact. 
And uh, so to say that Hitler was a Christian is just not true. I mean, I know I have very close friends at Yad Vashem in Jerusalem, and they acknowledge absolutely that Hitler was not a Christian right. by any means or stretch of the imagination. But he certainly uh, used Christian theology that was anti-Semitic. He used the writings of Luther that were deeply anti-Semitic, and he leveraged anything he could uh, in the community to make his views acceptable and legitimate so that he could move against the Jewish people uh, and uh, plan for their genocide. So it's clear, Malcolm, then, uh, you know, at its core, Nazi doctrine was demonic. Absolutely, all cult. In, in all cult in origin, and any Christianity per se that was used was used in deception. Absolutely, that's what happened. And there's a, there's, a, there's a volume, a very important book out about it. It's a very thick book, well documented. It's called The Occult History of the Third Reich. Wow. And it's, it documents everything I've said to you today. And uh, our listeners or our viewers should certainly, if they can get a copy, get hold of one. It teaches clearly the occult underpinnings of the Third Reich. Wow. Well, thank you, Malcolm. Did you want to make a comment about true Christians under the Nazi dictatorship? Anything? No. We know there were many, is there? Well, sadly, there were many, many Christians who were true, who acquiesced. They, they couldn't uh, take the heat, mm. and that's a sad thing, and, it's, yeah. it, and I understand that, and we regret it. Uh, but there were Christians who stood up against the right. Nazi system, and of course the most famous of which possibly mm -hmm. is Dietrich, Dietrich yeah. Bonhoeffer, and Niemöller, another, another mm. preacher, and, uh, and Dietrich Bonhoeffer, uh, uh, left Germany because he saw the rise of Nazism. He sort of took flight, came to America, came to New York, and uh, there at the Hudson River, he states that God spoke to him and asked him right. what he was doing there. And mm. he knew that he had to go back to Germany. Mm. And of course, he, he stood up and, uh, and paid for it with his life. Right. And in some ways, he was associated with the Valkyrie, with the attempted assassination mm, yeah. of Hitler. Not that he was directly involved, but he knew some of the conspirators and, um, who tried to do away with Hitler. Right. And of course, he was finally arrested, and uh, just a short while before the end of the Second World War, sadly, he was hung. And, uh, but he stood up, and he, he, he stands as a, as a real source of inspiration. Inspiring story, absolutely. absolutely. Which, uh, we should draw from as believers, definitely. Yeah, you know, and take the, the lesson from. In the light of even the growing anti-Semitism again. Exactly. Thank you, Malcolm. You're welcome. Thank you. Please share this video, and on YouTube, click the button below to become a subscriber.